We are living in a very important moment in the history of the Catholic Church. All of the cardinals have now gathered in Rome to elect the new Pope. I believe the conclave begins tomorrow and during the conclave a new Pope will be elected. The cardinals that have gathered represent the entire Catholic Church. Unfortunately Guyana doesn't have a cardinal and there is no cardinal for the whole of the Caribbean but there are many cardinals from South America and North America and I believe Cuba has a cardinal but they are coming not as representatives of the countries from which they come but they are gathering because each one of these cardinals is a parish priest of one of the churches in Rome. So the election of the Pope is, if you like, the parish priests of the churches in Rome coming together to elect their bishop, the Bishop of Rome. But it just so happens that the Bishop of Rome is also the successor to Saint Peter, the Supreme Pontiff, the Pope, the leader of the Roman Catholic Church worldwide. More than one billion Catholics are looking forward to and praying for the election of the Pope. The word conclave, the meeting of these cardinals at which the Pope is elected, comes from two Latin words, con and clave, and literally it means closed with a key. In the old days what used to happen is that the cardinals were locked inside the Sistine Chapel. Oh, by the way, the Sistine Chapel is very beautiful. The paintings on the ceilings and the walls were painted by Michelangelo and they depict scenes from the Bible, the creation, the fall, the redemption of Jesus Christ and the judgment, the last judgment, those going to heaven and those going to hell. Very dramatic. But in these beautiful surroundings, in the old days, the cardinals would be locked inside until a new pope was elected. Unfortunately, this doesn't happen anymore. The cardinals are housed in some very comfortable accommodations just outside of the Vatican, where each one is given an ensuite room, and they're bussed backwards and forwards to the Sistine Chapel each day until the pope is elected. But when they used to be locked inside, there was one occasion when the cardinals were taking a very long time to elect the new pope. And the people outside got a little bit fed up. So with one of the meals they sent in a message saying, right, no more food until a new pope is elected. And lo and behold, the very next day, white smoke puffed out of the chimney and a new pope was found. It's a rather archaic way of communicating to the world that we have a new Pope, but during the election process, the ballot papers that have been used and the notes that cardinals have written down during the election, they're all placed into an ancient stove and burnt. The ballot papers alone just produce a small whiff of black smoke and the people outside know that another vote has taken place but no Pope has been elected. But when we do have a Pope, well, in the old days again, they used to add in lots of damp straw, which would produce billowing clouds of white smoke to the jubilation and pleasure of the crowds outside in St. Peter's Square. But again, nowadays, the whole process has been modernized and there are some chemical canisters which are supposed to produce the white smoke to communicate this important news to the rest of the world. Santa Maria, Santa Dei Genetrix, Santa Virgo Virginum, Santi Michael Gabriel et Raphael, Sancti Angeli, Sante Abraham, Sante Moises, Sante Elia, Sante Yosef. 
Moses. Sancte Johannes Baptista. Omnes Sancti Patriarche et Prophete. Sancti Petre et Paule. Sancte Andrea. Sancti Johannes et Iacove. Sancte Toma. Sancti Filipe et Iacove. Sancte Bartolome. Sancte Josaphat, Sancte Paule, Sancte Johannes et Isaac, Sancte Petre. Sancte Carole, Sancte Perpetua et Felicitas, Santa Agnes, Santa Nina, Santa Maria. Sancti Marti, Sancte Vincenti, Sancte Ioannes Maria, Sancte Ioannes, Santa Catarina, Santa Teresia Iesu, <coughs> Santa Rosa, <coughs> Sante Ludovice, <coughs> Santa Monica, <coughs> Santa Elizabeth, Omne Sancti e Sancte Dei, Propitius Esto, Ab Omni Malo, Peccato, ab insidiis diaboli, ab ira et odio et omni mala voluntate, a morte perpetua. Carnationem tuam, per nativitatem tuam. Of the cardinals, you will find in the press some referred to as papable, that just means a possible candidate for Pope. And there has been a great deal of speculation about which cardinal might be elected. But it doesn't have to be a cardinal. The only English pope, that was Nicholas Breakspeare, who became Pope Adrian IV, was a humble monk in a monastery in France when they called him and said, we want you to be the supreme pontiff 
we want you to be the leader of the Catholic Church. So he had to be ordained a bishop and then installed as the Pope, the Bishop of Rome. The election process is very interesting. The cardinals are seated along long tables and each one is given a little slip of paper. And on that paper they must write down before God the name of the person they think most suitable to lead the Catholic Church in this present time. The papers are collected in a very ornate silver chalice and three cardinals are chosen to open the papers and read out the names and the names are tabulated. But to be elected Pope you need a two-thirds plus one majority. There should be 120 cardinals gathered for the conclave. Unfortunately cardinals that are over 80 are not el eligible to attend and vote. But the 120 have been reduced to just 115, so I think the magic number is 77, if my mathematics is correct. So the first time somebody achieves 77 votes, they are declared to be the next pope. During the first round of, vo of voting, it's very unlikely that somebody will be elected because many people will have many different opinions about who the most uh, suitable person to be the leader of our church would be. But as the rounds go on, people will then see how the votes are going and eventually a leader emerges and eventually someone gets the two-thirds majority. Sometimes there's a sort of stalemate situation. There are two very strong candidates and the supporters of these candidates are not prepared to cede their votes to the other candidate. But on occasions like that, it happens that a third compromise candidate acceptable to both sides will emerge. And then gaining momentum, that person will be elected the Pope because neither of the supporters of the other two are prepared to support the, uh, the opposing rival. The election process is a very exciting time for us. But what I'm urging you to do today is to pray for the cardinals who are gathered and to pray for the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit will come upon them. It's a rather long and drawn out process because they're only allowed so many votes per day. And if nobody is elected on the first day, then it goes to a second day of voting, a third day. Often the Pope is elected on the fifth or sixth day of balloting. But it's a very important moment for us because we need to pray that the Holy Spirit will inspire the cardinal electors to choose somebody who has all of the gifts and talents that are needed to guide our church through the difficult times that we are experiencing. And I think our prayers can make a difference to this process. So I would like to urge you to pray for the cardinals that they will be open to the movements of the Holy Spirit and that they will choose somebody who we can all look up to and respect. Somebody who will guide and steer our church. Somebody who everybody will see as a focus of, of unity, the successor of St. Peter, the representative of Jesus Christ, the Pope of Rome. Let's pray for him, the one who will be elected. God bless you all.